I think a lot of people don't understand that gender is a social construct, that human society took something biological and assigned something really not biological. Um, so gender and sex, like they're not at all related. And a lot of people struggle with that idea of like, gender is something that society made up. Questioning gender identity and questioning the concept of gender are two very different things. I think it's a lot easier for someone to question a concept than it is themselves. This was a question that became lodged in my mind around the age of three. I asked questions about why do girls get to wear dresses and guys get to wear suits or ties? And no one really was ever able to answer these questions. So I said, well, if you're not going to give me the answer, I'm going to figure it out. I actually didn't really realize that something was amiss until I was fairly older. Um, so I was in sixth grade the first time I realized that I didn't want to be a girl. Like femininity always, I kind of struggled with. I was trying to make it seem natural, trying to make it seem like it was just something I wanted to do, but I was always doing it for other people. Um, and I always considered myself kind of an outcast because everyone else was doing this so naturally, and I had to like put so much effort into it and try so hard. And I think I first started really questioning my gender when I was 11 or 12. Definitely, before I came out, Having the pressure to, you know, play with girls' toys, um, wear dresses, like the color pink, all of that was really uncomfortable for me. In sixth grade, when I started going through puberty, like, it, it hit me like a bus, like, the feeling that, that this is wrong. Like, this shouldn't be happening to my body. I want to look like the boys. Um, I want my body to look like the boys. Um, and I wanted the other boys around me to recognize me as one of them. From a young age, it was like, you're a guy, you're a girl, and whatever your body is, that's what you are. When I started going through puberty, it just really did not feel right. Um, and so, it was just kind of like, I don't like what my body is doing. I don't think that this is supposed to be what it is. And I guess that was the really key point that, that was like, okay, there's something different about me. For something that isn't bound to the real world, isn't bound to actual biology, to have that much of an impact on people's lives, it's scary and it's really weird to think about. I can remember dressing up in like my brother's clothing, like hand me down, stealing stuff from my cousin so I could dress up as a boy, um, getting hats specifically big enough so I could hide all of my hair up under them, just so I could dress in drag. I began to attempt to cross dress as much as possible. Uh, cross dressing was considered by my own book to be something that was abhorrent, though. It was something that was shameful in the eyes of God. And so I was literally in the closet, hiding in a closet when everyone was out of the house. It was usually just seen as kind of a game, and that's really how it played off. It's a game, but it would always end at some point. Starting in 10th grade, I started drawing myself as a man. A lot of my guy friends, it was funny, I would ask them like, hey, can, can I take pictures of you shirtless so that, you know, I can draw myself as a man? and, and Bless them, they were all on board. They were like, okay. Um, that continued like well into my senior year. My AP portfolio was based around the central theme of you know gender identity and being male versus being female. The majority of my friends were male, and what I hated the most was that I was their token girl. That wasn't who I was. It was hard for me to explain to them, like, no, I'm one of you. But I also didn't really have the language to explain that like I didn't know what transgender people were like if if someone would have asked me like are you transgender like I would have been like you know, isn't that a character from Rocky Horror like you know what what does that mean I feel like the
feeling about being trans or non-binary and experiencing gender dysphoria is really difficult to put to words. It's really difficult to explain to someone who hasn't felt that way. I found it very difficult to um, differentiate between being like a really masculine lesbian and being a trans male. There was a lot of misconceptions that I kind of had to um, sort through to try to see what my true feelings were inside. Pretty much my entire 7th and 8th grade years were just spent googling everything about transgender, gender identity, and how to transition. So the internet is really your best friend. It is all the information you need from all these different perspectives that you just have at your fingertips. I use the internet mostly, and that's something about our generation that we kind of have going for us, is because there are resources online to talk to someone about, you know, what this is, or learn through different social medias, you know, what being trans is, what being gay is. A lot of transgender people will post uh, transition videos on YouTube. And in high school, I used to pull these videos up for trans men, and I would just go watch them and I would cry um, because I wanted that. There were dances and there were just schemas that society kind of imposed on us. And so I would still have this reinforcement, oh yeah, but I, I have to be the man though. And that allowed me again to start pushing things back. And so it became a constant battle. And then as I went to college, that battle turned into a lot of deep, deep substance abuse. Depression really kicked in bad. Until one day I found myself lying in bed, not able to get out. Really, physically unable to get out. I really wanted to understand why is it that I'm consistently suffering. There must be some meaning to this. There has to be. There were many years where I just felt this sort of nameless angst, which at the time I just brushed off as, I'm a teenager, of course I'm feeling angst. You know, it was like this this deep sense of wrongness, and what I now know is like just gender dysphoria, and the feeling that I wasn't who I was supposed to be, and I didn't have a word for it. Because I didn't know what it was, I couldn't even begin to start dealing with it or coping with it. I've always been kind of like masculine as a person. When I was a kid, I was one of those, I want to be a boy kind of people. So I always presented in a very masculine way. I pass as male from like, age seven on. And it always kind of annoyed me when we'd be in restaurants or something and like my mom or my grandmother would correct the waiter after they called me sir. And I didn't really realize why that was because um, I didn't know that changing gender in general was a possibility until I think halfway through my seventh grade year. Definitely before I came out, having the question of like, are you a boy or a girl was a big issue for me because I always felt awkward answering girl. Sometimes I would lie about it. Sometimes I just wouldn't answer. I was always known as a very masculine tomboy. I was very aggressive towards that term. I was a little scared. I was like, what do you mean I'm a tomboy? Are you insinuating that I'm a boy? And so that kind of like, I didn't want to be seen as someone weird or whatever, but it definitely the idea that I was different from a young age and people were noticing that I wasn't wearing feminine clothing and stuff like that. It did definitely affect how I grew up. And I feel like it made my transition a little bit easier because they always had seen me as a very masculine figure. Being a teenager uh, is already a very conflicted time. It's already a time of transition where you're trying to go from a child to an adult. To put on top of that, like, trying to figure out how to fit into this new gender box. Almost like you're trying to dissect your entire childhood and realize what kind of adult you want to be through the scope of gender. Like that is so much to handle on top of all the regular teenage you know, struggles. It was definitely very difficult to try to find myself in the sense of being a teenager too because in high school there's lots of cliques and everyone wants to fit into a group and trying to figure out who I really was was a major portion of trying to fit into a group or trying to figure out what I wanted to do in high school. And it definitely was just another struggle, and it was like, I'm already having to try to figure out who I am as a person, and now I'm having to figure out who I am just in this small portion of my life. So I was asking myself these questions. I said, how do you know you're trans? And there's no scale for this. There's no metric. There's no way to really tell. But who tells me? How do I figure it out? 
my partner was like, listen, you need to go get some professional help. So I did. And immediately in that first session, I began to just see it. I'm, I think I'm trans. Stephen Colbert was mocking Facebook for adding more gender options, and ironically him making fun of transgender people made me think, oh, maybe I'm transgender. So I'd known I wasn't straight for a while, and I kind of started getting more involved in the LGBT community, and realized that being transgender was a thing, and pretty quickly I realized that that fit me pretty well. I really was like, okay, what's going on, and I started to figure out that there were such things as being transgender. I really connected with that. I had no idea how to go about starting that transition. Like, you know, do I come out to everyone I know first? Do I get therapy? Do I find a doctor? And I looked into it more and I said, wow, it's really not that difficult. And it's really not that expensive. And I was like, wow, this is actually possible. I can do this. Today is June 11th, 2017, and I'm one day away from starting testosterone. Today is July 7th, 2017, and I'm now one month on testosterone. I'm now eight weeks on testosterone. I'm officially one year on testosterone. Um, I'm also about two and a half weeks post-op, and I'm feeling pretty good. It's a, it's a real radical choice to come out, to be yourself, to come face to face with yourself, and to not just do that one time, but each and every day, that takes 100%. That takes all of you. And so I just continue to check the estrogen right there, and I haven't looked back. It was for the first time someone seen me in all of the vulnerability that's there, in all of the, this is me. That was a real time for me to be able to see someone else not turn away and see love actually begin to grow. I think there's a lot of misunderstandings around trans identity because people think if I'm a trans man, I'm going to be masculine 100% of the time because now I'm trying to be a boy. I'm just going to be who I am and I think that fits more into the masculine spectrum of things. They get so confused because they are still thinking of gender as like these strict boxes. And really, it, it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. And if I say I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I felt like a man, and I wanted to be a man, but I didn't want to give up a lot of the traditionally feminine things I still liked. It's a good thing to question your gender occasionally because there's a lot of things we pick up on, like the way men should be, the way women should be. And when you start to question your gender identity, immediately all of that social programming comes into question because it's arbitrary. I don't need to like sports, or I don't need to be exclusively attracted to women. You know, I don't need to, to hate makeup or the color paint or those things. A lot of people don't get the chance to explore themselves when there are different boxes and things like that that they have to go through. We shouldn't try to push people to do things based on their gender. Like, you have to fit into a, the box of male or the box of female. There are all sorts of different, like, transgender people. It's not like one single look, one single kind of personality. I think the hardest would probably be talking to my peers about it. A lot of times I didn't really know how to explain to them what being transgender was, because I had a lot of anxieties about that. Like correcting people on my name and pronouns was a big issue at first. It's been a really long and hard process, like coming out to my grandmother. She still has issues with my name and pronouns after four years. My family was just somewhat conservative and they were just saying things that, I was like, you don't know my story. And you're saying things that just are pretty hurtful. I faced a lot of struggles with the people in my community and their response. I live in a very, um, conservative county and they're very opinionated about how they feel about certain things and so I found a real struggle with kids at school accepting me. 
what I wish the most is that people who don't understand what it is to be trans or non-binary would just accept that it's a thing. No one has to understand what it's like to be a trans man in order to use my name and pronouns. And sometimes I barely understand it. It took me years to understand what it means to be transgender and I lived it. If they say I'm trans or I'm non-binary, I'm genderqueer, you believe them and you say, okay, like how can I help? I think you can just be a better ally by either asking trans people about their experiences in a way that you know they're comfortable with, if that is an opportunity you have, or um, just making sure resources are accessible about the LGBT community. One of the things that I encourage, at least for myself, is for people to ask me questions rather than just assuming something off the bat. I would much rather someone come up to me and ask me a question like, hey, what does testosterone do? Like, what is the purpose of it? And we can have that conversation. There's definitely some struggles I still face as far as, like, people being ignorant and saying things that they don't realize how much they affect other people. Sometimes I just, I just want to be a normal guy. It's certainly difficult being a fairly open transgender person. It, it opens me up to a lot of questions that are uncomfortable. It opens me up to a lot of unsolicited opinions, some of which are religious in nature. For me personally, I don't like someone to make a big deal about them messing up. Um, you know, it's, I've realized over my transition that, you know, people are people, they're going to make mistakes, especially if they've known you your entire life. And, you know, I would prefer them to just, you know, politely say sorry and just move on and correct themselves next time. Let the LGBT person have complete control. Let them come out to you, let them tell their story to you, and support them. Learn to listen more than you talk. When people are choosing to share their own self with you in this way, that they are being vulnerable, that they are trusting you, that there's much more of their story than meets the eye. Having people that you can talk to is so so important and being able to feel safe and feel validated and feel trust just recently my grandmother took me shopping for the first time in my life and it was the strongest clearest most evident way that i ever have seen anyone show their love for me there's no way i can ever return that feeling but it just fills me with warmth i'm really lucky that i had um, supportive people here in Charlottesville and that my family supported me. My parents didn't really get it at first, but they were on board and they wanted to, to learn and to know what to do and what not to do. I try to never take that for granted because I know I'm really lucky. I kind of sought support from my friends mostly. I had really supportive friends from early on. Living in Charlottesville, there was never anyone who like wasn't accepting, so it was always really easy for me to find a friend to talk to who kind of could sympathize with what I was going through even if they hadn't like experienced that themselves. Definitely my mom. She was my main support system throughout this whole process. Um, she was with me through the whole thing. She tried to do her research and understand what was going on and try to support me the best that she could. Noah has been my sunshine since the day he was born. He is the light of my life. I am so proud of him as a person, the kind of person he has grown up to be. I started noticing that he was just struggling, and he turned to self-harm, which really freaked me out. So we got into the therapy, and we got into just talking about him being different, that he was not happy as a girl. Kids that self-harm initially are not suicidal. They are just trying to deal with their emotions the best they can. When I found out that um, he was also, you know, he was trans, when trans kids are self-harming, there is a big increase in the possibility of actual suicide. That really hit me hard because I was like, I, I would not be able to just be in this life without him. That was my turning point when I 
told everyone I'd rather have a son than a dead daughter. Especially where I'm from, like my mom has stood up for me in many situations and said, you know, this isn't right, or just trying to explain to people who don't know, like this is what being trans is, and it's not a choice. It's not a choice to be who you are. It's a um, decision that you have to make to be happy. I wish, especially parents of trans kids, knew that. I know you want to feel like you have control over this aspect of your kid's life because it's a big aspect of your kid's life, but they really, really need to have some power over this. Giving your kid control over just this one thing, trusting that they know more about this one aspect of their life than you do, is so, so important and it does so much for their mental health. Uh, something that a lot of people don't realize is when you're transgender and young specifically, um, there's a massive feeling of frustration because your transition is 100% in the hands of other people. It's in the hands of the law, it's in the hands of your parents, it's in the hands of your teachers and your classmates. Very rarely did I actually feel like I had any power over my transition, and that is an incredibly frustrating and debilitating feeling that no person should ever have to go through. As a parent, the only thing you need to know is that your kid is what's important. And being there for your kid, backing your kid, um, letting your kid know day in and day out, I'm here for you. What's most important is to support your child and be there for your child. I have a son that I'm very proud of. He's an amazing kid. He's always the kid who has rooted for the underdog. And looking back, that's because through so much of his life, that was him. He was the underdog, he was the child, he felt marginalized, felt out of the loop until now that he's found himself. I love you too. Oh. If you begin to question things, don't just take it lightly, but really investigate really remembering that you are who you are and that you don't need to have an answer for that right now. It will come in its own time. There may be some people along the way whose identities change. There may be someone that at one point in their life thinks that they are gay, another point thinks they're straight, one point thinks they're trans, one point thinks they're not. There's nothing bad about questioning your gender identity. Like maybe you come out on the other side and you're like, oh yeah, I totally am cisgender. But there's there's nothing wrong about questioning who you are and how you feel, how you want other people to perceive you. I think that it's healthy to question that sometimes. And that that doesn't mean that you're trans. It doesn't mean that you're not trans. It's, it's a question that only really you can answer. And it's okay if you don't know right away. It took me, man, like, at, at least 10 years from the point where I first felt gender dysphoria to the point where I walked into this doctor's office and said, hi, I'm transgender and I don't know what to do about it. The advice I give is to not rush into anything. Not everyone has the same experience with their gender, with their transition. Um, it's different for everyone. Don't go too quickly. Know that it takes time. It takes a lot of energy. It's It could be hard and that's gonna happen. I think it's very important just to give people uh, like a time and a safe space to just be like, hey, you know, what what am I? Who am I? They don't have to change anything. They don't have to um, put themselves in a box, but really explore the idea of breaking gender norms or things like that. And that there are people who will actually talk to you and be nice to you if you decide that you need to go through a transition or you want to experiment a little bit with you know, different names or different pronouns, it's definitely okay to do all of that. Your life is still okay, like you're happy, you're healthy, and nothing bad happened from coming out as transgender. And you know, there's some bumps along the way. For me, it was absolutely 100% worth it. And if I had to live it again, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm a lot more emotionally mature than I would be otherwise. Um, 
I spent a lot of time in middle school and high school just trying to think about who I was, who I wanted to be, how I saw myself. And I think the result of that is that I have a much stronger sense of self. I'm much more confident. It did take a couple of years for me to go into testosterone and get top surgery, and I am happy that happened because it gave me time to like think about myself um, and to know that this is really what I wanted. Right now, I'm just recently about five and a half months um, post top surgery, so I had a um, bilateral double mastectomy, and that's probably been one of the best things that has come out of my transition because you know it, it made me feel happy with myself in a way that I really hadn't felt before. I'm definitely a lot better now than I was. Pre-testosterone, pre-top surgery, like you wait for these things and it really is as good as you imagine it would be. I have become so much more authentically in touch with my own self and it's been this continuous unfolding. I, for the first time, have been able to really, really feel emotions again and really, really be able to connect with family members. It's made me feel so much more alive. And I wouldn't trade that for the world.